Okay, today's installation's in a, um, a Toyota Hilux today, and uh, Hiluxes and Ford Rangers are um, uh, pretty good to do an installation into because the manufacturer um, has thought to provide a useful method of getting between the engine bay and the passenger compartment. Here it is here, here's the, the rubber grommet that goes through the firewall and there is actually two rubber nipples, there's one over this side here you probably can't see it because it might be in the dark and there's one on this side here that we've already run the coax cable through the Ford Rangers are pretty similar and it makes installation really easy um, probably the, um, the vehicle that's the worst vehicle to get to to um, get, even get to the uh, rubber grommet is a VW Amarox. Um, it's down behind a battery. You have to shift the battery out of the way, and even then, it's a bit like inseminating a cow, except it's not nice and warm. Um, you have to reach down into a hollow uh, to actually get to it. Anyway, the Toyota guys have gone one step better than that. Um, underneath the engine bay, they've even supplied a accessory fuse holder. This thing right here. So we will actually power our um, power our radio via that accessory fuse holder. There's no need to even uh, get anywhere near the battery. Um, no need to lift that cover there at all. We're going to go in, into this fuse holder. Okay. I think uh, just a comment from me. I think that uh, both uh, the Toyota people and the uh, Ford Ranger people need to be complimented on their foresight. The VW Amarok's a V6 diesel. There you go. Um, however, uh, these vehicles have a couple of issues that make uh, radio telephone installations um, considerably more difficult than other vehicles. Um, most notably, it's incredibly difficult to get between the passenger compartment and the engine bay with any form of cabling. Now. Uh, there is a firewall grommet here. Um, to get access to it, you have to remove the battery. You have to displace the battery. Uh, you can move it forward several inches. And then down in this corner down in here is where the rubber grommet is. Now, um, I'll put a torch down there so you can see it, maybe. Um, it's incredibly difficult to see. Um, you can just get your hand down there, only just, and uh, there's a bit of a hazard involved with working down in there. Um, whoever designed the, uh, this vehicle um, created a little bit of a trap for the, for the less than weary, and that little trap, particularly if you're reaching down there with a tool, a metallic tool, is this little cap here on the end of the battery comes off. That's positive. So if you're reaching down there with a metallic tool, you've got an instant short, or potential for an instant short, which makes life a little interesting. Um, the best thing to do, of course, if you're unaware of that, is to uh, disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. Um, but then you've got all sorts of other issues, probably with the vehicle, with error codes and security um, security codes for the uh, stereo and other things. So. Um, uh, unless you know what you're doing, talk to the dealer about disconnecting the battery here up the, at this terminal. Um, now, when you're passing cables through a rubber grommet like this, um, uh, a lot of installers will arbitrarily bang a hole in it or cut a slit in it. Now, there's a couple of problems with doing that. Uh, the first problem is, of course, you uh, uh, create a, a path for water and dust to enter the vehicle. Um, but if you cut a rubber grommet like that, the cut also, um, it won't stop, it continues to open up um, and you end up with a large rent in the, uh, in the grommet. Um, and the other issue is that sealing them up when you do that kind of thing is um, you know, very difficult to do and when I've come across it and attempted to um, seal up after somebody else has lashed into a rubber grommet, um, the, the results fair to middling so if you're banging a hole in a rubber grommet like that it's uh, sort of somewhere between pointless and useless 
if you can get the cable um, through the or under the grommet so much the better um, unlike uh, Ford Rangers and uh, Toyotas um, the, those people have actually thought about this particular issue and have left behind a little rubber nipple that you can snip off and uh, easily access through okay we're uh, looking at our rubber grommet for our um, Toyota and uh, that rubber skirt that's just there which we've pulled our cables through um, we have a couple of choices for sealing that up and uh, the best way probably to seal that up is you could you could put a, a little bit of Sikaflex on your cables and draw them back into that rubber skirt and then put a, a, a zip tie around it to squeeze it up tight um, but in my experience we've found that unnecessary uh, the best thing to do here is just ensure that these cables are pulled and secured below that grommet so that you actually create a, a, a downhill section between the grommet and, and the point where the zip tie is so if there's any water gets on it um, it literally drips off um, and doesn't run doesn't capillary action doesn't pull the water um, and follow the cables through the grommet okay spot you later bye for now